in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. G. B. Udeshi Manufacturer, Presentation Articles Bombay No help like self-help is a truism ably demonstrated by G. B. Udeshi, a blind man who single-handed runs a small business manufacturing plastic and rexine presentation articles. Starting in a very modest way with just one item a plastic zippered insurance policy folder and a few customers who could be counted on his fingertips. Today, with the grace of God as he says and a lot of hard work, he undertakes over a thousand big and small orders. He employs four to five sighted workers under him whom he trains and directs. At all the numerous LIC branches, Udeshi finds a ready and extensive clientele for his smart policy holders of different sizes and designs. He also has standing orders for plastic donor cards at the three main blood banks attached to the Tata, St. George and Bombay hospitals. He makes plastic containers for storing the blood bottles as well. Recently he bagged the order for supplying executive folders to the International Conference on Surgery in the Tropics held at the Bombay Hospital in January 1976. Other items he deals in are dailies, writing pads, telephone indexes, and Diwali greetings cards. Of course getting orders means considerable legwork and shrewd assessment of the market but then he is a born tradesman. Udeshi always aims at pleasing the customer. He keeps sample articles on view and asks the customer's opinion regarding their utility and their attractiveness. By now he has many regular customers, French dyes and chemicals, Turner Hoare and Co., Jeevan Silk Mills, Bhogilal and Co., etc. His tiny one-room office cum workshop in Bora Bazar, a congested locality of South Bombay, is now proving too small for its purpose. Udeshi is looking round for a suitable place for expansion, anywhere in Bombay or even outside it. He is looking for a party who will give him a plot of land or the money to buy one which he intends repaying in installments. He is particularly keen to start a unit where the physically handicapped can be trained and employed on fixed wages and is hoping that one of the national institutions for their welfare will come forward to make a beginning which could eventually absorb a good many of the unemployed, unskilled handicapped workers. After all, he has been one of them and is keenly aware what they have to go through. From early childhood he suffered from sore eyes and indistinct vision, and was advised removal of one eye at the age of 11. Later on, the other eye also became infected and gradually he lost that one too. But he never lets his handicap get him down. Full of life he talks animatedly on all things politics, religion, cinema and has recently appeared on a TV program. Two years ago he married a girl who is also blind. He is so full of plans about the future that he has no time to worry about the past. B. Venkatesh Business Communications Consultant Bombay Freelancing in industry is what he calls it. And with his dashing air, pleasing good looks be, and persuasive manner, Venkatesh has no difficulty in getting on the right side of people and selling his ideas to those who matter, even if he bumps into them casually. That is how he got in with Raleigh's Wolf Limited, on a retainer basis from 1973 to 1975. His job was to prepare a factory manual for the orientation of new employees and for reference purposes. He also prepared lectures and notes based on data provided by heads of departments and on information gathered from books for use by the company in training production supervisors and salesmen. The areas covered included the elements of planning, organization and control, human relations communication, management development, elements of marketing and marketing research. His next assignment was with Larson and Tobro Limited. 
Jia he designed and conducted a program on written communication for all categories of their employees. The objective of the program was to make written communication more effective. The topics touched upon were avoidance of common errors in writing, guidelines for good report writing, effective business letters, memo writing and correct use of punctuation. As Venkatesh points out succinctly few companies realize that all their good work in image building can be undone by a few bad letters. A colossal amount of paper and man hours are lost because of the inadequacy of the existing functional knowledge of English. Venkatesh believes he is the first blind person and the second Indian to have devised and conducted such a course. According to the deputy general manager, personnel, Larson and Tobro, Mr. Venkatesh was rated excellent as a faculty member. According to the evaluations, the participants found the entire course very useful and of special value to them in their jobs. Venkatesh has now been sounded by the Indian Telephone Industries, Bangalore, and the Industrial Agricultural Engineering Co. PVT Limited for administering this course to their employees. His fluency and love for the English language have been with him since his college days at the Madras Christian College where he did both his BA and his MA with English literature and language for his subjects. Whilst there, he was founder and managing editor of a journal called English. He also organized weekly play reading sessions, assisted in the production of the college play Beckett and was the secretary of the Literary and Debating Society during 1969-70. Even his first job was a temporary lectureship in English at Somaya College, Bombay, in 1972-73. His other accomplishments include singing both tenor and bass for school and college choirs, playing the guitar, participating in chess tournaments and taking keen interest in all forms of sport. He loves the good life and is a bohemian at heart, but where work is concerned, Venkatesh lets his performance speak for him. If a blind man wishes to hold an executive position, he says, he must prove to his employer that it is worthwhile incurring a marginal increase in cost, involved in engaging an additional worker to assist with the paperwork, in return for the far greater increase in output and efficiency that he will get. Purushottam Lal Verma Administrative Assistant Tata Iron and Steel Co. Jamshedpur Young, Handsome Highly educated, administrative assistant to Sko, Jamshedpul, married to a charming wife, swims, plays the Spanish guitar, what more could one ask for? Sounds like a success story all right, but it is a bittersweet story, having for its central theme the tragedy of blindness. For Purushottam Lal Verma, Nikki to his friends, lost his eyesight at the age of 13 due to retinal detachment in both eyes. Till then he had been studying at St. Edmund's School, Shillong, and St. Thomas High School, Dehradun. After that he sat for his matriculation as well as his BA degree from the Punjab University as a private candidate. In 1968 he acquired his master's degree in sociology from the same university. Armed with this, he found no difficulty in being taken up as an extension and research officer at the Tata Agricultural and Rural Training Center for the Blind, TASIB, Fansa, Gujarat. TASIB is a unique project which imparts knowledge of agriculture, horticulture, dairy farming and poultry keeping to its blind trainees. Here, yeah, Nikki was engrossed in compiling an evaluation report on the rehabilitation program of TASIB, which later on came out in print under the title Differential Effectivity of Rehabilitation and the Dynamics of Outcome. His sincerity and devotion to work caught the attention of Mr. F. S. Mullah, the Chief Public Relations Officer of Tata Sons, P. Limited, who was also a member of the Committee of Management, TASIB. After Nikki completed his research assignment, Mr. Mullah recommended him to the directors of the Tata Iron and Steel Co. Limited, TISCO, for a suitable opening. So in December 1970, he was appointed on a year's probation and thereafter absorbed as an administrative assistant, attached to the senior executive officer. As such, says Nikki, 
he has to handle establishment matters such as standard force and manpower. He has to manage the study tours of officers and technicians of the company at home and abroad, and he deals with a permanent scheme of letters of recommendation and farewell from the chairman Mr. J. R. D. Tata, to officers of the company for meritorious work or retirement after long service. He also has to attend to matters concerning personal like promotions, advance increments, cash rewards, and all special sanctions related to recruitment, training, and placement. Highly popular with everybody, Nikki is credited with the ability to charm the very birds of the trees, if he has a mind to. He spares no pains or efforts to please and whatever success comes his way is both rightfully earned and richly deserved. Dr. Ved Prakash Verma Lecturer in Philosophy Delhi University New Delhi It has been an uphill struggle all the way for Dr. Ved Prakash Verma to establish himself in his present position as Lecturer in Philosophy, Department of Philosophy, Delhi University. It has been a continuous struggle against ill-conceived stubborn prejudices which time and again barred his progress solely on account of his blindness, without any consideration for proven merit. This happened when he wanted to join college after his matriculation from the UP Board of Education in 1954. He was denied admission on the grounds that a blind student could not study with sighted ones. It was with great difficulty he overcame opposition and eventually obtained his bachelor's degree from Agra University. Continuing at the Agra College, he sat in 1960 for his master's degree in philosophy and created history by standing first in the whole university. Even that did not get him anywhere. He was frustrated at repeated rejection in his attempts to obtain employment. All that he could obtain was a temporary lecturership at St. John's College, Agra. So he applied to the University Grants Commission for a junior research fellowship, which was awarded to him in 1963. Working hard on it for three years, his thesis on contemporary moral philosophy was accepted by Delhi University in January 1967. Still, he was without a job for several months, before he secured his present position in September 1967. He is a successful and popular lecturer mainly, he says, due to the wholehearted cooperation given to him by his students. He is now planning to register himself for postdoctoral work. He lost his sight in childhood due to trachoma, but that never stopped him from being always active. Throughout his education he took a leading part in extracurricular activities, winning several prizes for essay writing and debating, and he developed a keen appreciation for Hindi and English literature. In 1968 he married. His wife was a lecturer at a teacher's training college. They now have a son. Apart from teaching, Dr. Verma is closely involved in work for the blind. He has held the office of the Vice President of the National Federation of the Blind, India. He emphatically wants a better deal for the visually handicapped. He is a dedicated worker, having gone through the mill himself and knowing at first hand the unequal odds the blind are faced with in life. Dr. Rajendra T. Vyas Regional Representative Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind Bombay M.A. LLB, Ph.D., Advocate, Bombay High Court, Regional Representative, South Asia, Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind, Co-Secretary, National Association for the Blind, United Nations Fellow. You may run out of breath, but you still won't reach the end of the list of qualifications and designations picked up by Dr. Rajendra T. Vyas in the course of his dynamic career. There is no major representative organization concerned with the education, rehabilitation and employment of the blind and the cure and prevention of blindness, both at national and international levels on which Dr. Vyas has not figured in an executive capacity. Naturally, he has many firsts to his credit. He is the first and only blind student to have obtained a doctorate from the University of Bombay. For his PhD thesis on the visually handicapped in Bombay State, 
Their social background and present status, Dr. Vyas traveled 5,000 miles through Gujarat and Maharashtra, visited 18 institutions, and interviewed 1,000 blind persons. He was the first blind person to have been appointed as a lecturer at a college affiliated to Bombay University. He was the first to start a talking magazine for the blind in January 1957, formally inaugurated by the then President of India, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Later on he was also instrumental in establishing the Talking Book Project at Bombay. Born in 1930, Dr. Vyas became blind at 11 due to bilateral iritis. But there was no holding him back. He passed school and college with resounding success. Among other positions, he was elected General Secretary of the Students' Union at the Ismail Yusuf College, which was quite a triumph for a blind man and a Hindu at that. He carried away the Rotary Prize for the Best Student of the Year. He was elected the Debating Secretary of the Law College and a member of the Executive Council of the National Union of Students. He had set his heart on a legal career which opened very promisingly. He got his first brief within a month. After his appearance in court, Justice Koyaji sent for him and said, I was told you are blind but I did not notice it. Hope to see you here often. It was with great reluctance that he gave up law to devote himself totally to blind welfare at the request of the National Association for the Blind. On the international scene, Dr. Vyas has been a member of the Executive Council and Delegate at Large, World Council for the Welfare of the Blind, Vice Chairman, Standing Committee on Asian Affairs for the Welfare of the Blind, United Nations Fellow and Member. International Federation of the Blind. He has observed blind welfare work in Switzerland, West Germany, USA, UK, Japan, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Ceylon, and Pakistan. He has also visited the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia. As regional representative of the Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind, UK's work involves the financial administration of its vast sources and the organization of eye camps in rural areas. Happily married to Madhavi Thakur, he is the father of three, widely travelled, extreme Elvi knowledgeable, he has a lot of charm, push and resourcefulness, he can be very persuasive and one may safely presume that what Dr. Vyas wants, Dr. Vyas gets. Professor D. W. Vadigaakar Research Scholar, Professor Government Law College Bombay to be quoted extensively in international journals as authority on the subject, to have made a mark in the field of research and scholarship is high honor indeed, much more so when the individual concerned is the only blind research work in law in India and perhaps even in the world. Such a one is Damodar Vaman Vadigaokar, whose special domain is the held of international law. Increased scientific and technological progress inevitably more legal problems affecting every nation in the world, directly or indirectly. Today laws governing air and outer space, telecommunications, transport and labor, to name a few, have a universal application. International law has always fascinated Professor Vadigaokar. He specialized in it in London in 1962 when appearing for his LL.M and his Barat Law examinations. He was awarded a scholarship by the Academy of International Law, The Hague, and he carried out his research in the libraries of Paris, Geneva and London. Can you imagine what a tough task it must have been for him to gather material which required hours of diligent reading and note-taking? But it can be done if there is the will and the determination. Today the professor has 15 research papers to his credit, published in international journals. Much reliance on readers. Thus he was forced to confine the greater part of his work to opinion giving. So, in 1970 he joined the Government Law College, Bombay where he still is, lecturing to both graduate and postgraduate students. Side by side he carries out his research, employing four research assistants and one stenographer who, between them, account for nearly one-third of his salary. Last year, Professor Vadegaokar was invited to Goa to lecture to the students of the government, Law College. Over a period of four days, 
covering two to three lectures a day, he got through his assignment with aplomb. Then came a greater honor. In 1975, Cochin University named him Professor Emeritus, offering him one of two chairs, the other being given to none other than the Honorable Justice Ray, Chief Justice of India. Dealing with the private law series, the professor had to prepare three lectures in the year, send them to Cochin for publication, and deliver them person ally at an appointed time. For this, he was given airfare and expenses for himself and his wife and an honorarium of Rs. 5.000- The tall, lanky professor is a delightful conversationalist, dramatizing every incident, mimicking the accents, say that of a London cabbie or a German disciplinarian, with verve and zest. For the rest, he is content. He has made a name in the field he has chosen. Merit, he says, counts above all, recognition will automatically follow. His dictum is, there is no shortcut to knowledge, no substitute for hard work. As far as his blindness is concerned, it does not him. When it is a question of a man's performance, blindness, he says, should be considered as neither a qualification nor a disqualification. He was a voracious knowledge accumulator. He used to read books with the volunteers. Major part of his reading was related with the blind welfare. He was traveling all over the world during his work tenure and after then to fulfill his responsibility on international level. Hence whenever during those visits he could get some technology developed for the benefit of the blind. He used to know about it completely and tried to bring it in India to benefit the upcoming blind persons. One of his friends says, has nobody could reach to the depth of the sea. Similarly there is knowledge of Dr. Vyas regarding the blind welfare. I don't think one could be more knowledgeable like him. At the end of his career, he was elected as an Honorary General Secretary of NAB India. He continued to serve the blind to his last breath. He never denied any blind person to meet him, communicate him and express his feeling even if the person is in the lowest cadre of the society. The day he took his last breath in the same evening, a group of blind hawkers at Kurla Railway Station, Mumbai said that, now onwards we have lost a person who can listen us carefully and solve our problems instantly. This was a real tribute to the work of Dr. Vyas in the field of blind welfare. Government of India honored Dr. Vyas by awarding him Padma Shri. A blind person's association, Mumbai was benefited many a times from Dr. Vyas because he always had a keen interest in helping the needy and poor blind persons. He also provided financial assistance for implementation through BPA to help the needy blind. Hence after the demise of Dr. Vyas BPA, Mumbai is giving award under his name Dr. Rajendra T. Vyas Award for the Best Educated Blind every year at Mumbai. Hemant J. Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind, India